Hello again. A lot of you like Ruger rifles, and so do I. In particular, the Model 77 is kind of a legendary rifle. And there's so much to cover and so many questions to answer. I learn a lot from, from answering your questions. And we'll start by looking at the Magnum Ruger 77, which was actually discontinued. But it was a very interesting rifle. Um, and what I've done is I took out the pre-64 Model 70 in 375 Holland and Holland and I took it out because this rifle as you probably know is probably the gold standard for uh, most for rifles and in 375 Holland and Holland it's quite interesting and next to it is a disassembled um, Ruger Magnum so <clears throat> what I learned is I think interesting here's the typical uh, Winchester Model 70 action, but the 375 Holland and Holland cartridge, which I should have had on the table, is longer than a standard action. So Winchester milled out this area of the receiver. This is, of course, a steel receiver, and the barrel is done properly, the action is done properly. It's all machine steel. Uh, Winchester on the pre 64 models, and maybe on the post 64s, I don't know, have this interesting tipping version of an express sight and lots of people try to find these 375 Holland and Holland pre-64s not that many were made anyway this this is just the beginning of the story for today and here we have the Ruger Magnum action and this is in 416 Rigby so I thought I would show you the actions uh, side by side and this action of course is standard length like I said with the milled area here and then the Ruger is an altogether bigger action and um, I'll probably put this model 70 away but one other thing I can show you is the uh, floor plates this is the floor plate for the 416 Rigby and that's what Winchester had for the 375 I mean the Rigby is a great big cartridge um, and of course there are more modern 416 cartridges now, the Remington and so on, the, the Weatherby. But this, um, this is in the Rigby. So I think I'll just set aside the, the pre-64 Model 70 now and then focus on the Magnum Ruger. So when I took it apart the first thing I noticed um, was where's the recoil lug? And I'm doing another video probably today on on just the Ruger 77 standard and this this is the uh, Hawkeye which you could buy today and you can see it has a recoil lug here but for some reason on the African model or the Magnum model um, the factory or designers decided not to have a typical recoil lug um, and they had an unusual arrangement of surfaces contact surfaces to deal with recoil maybe and I'm just guessing because the recoil forces are so extreme with the Rigby. The Rigby cartridge is, as I said, massive and the volume of gas that that cartridge produces, which results in recoil, is incredible. Uh, so anyway, this rifle is not a typical run-of-the-mill factory Ruger Magnum in 416 Rigby. This uh, was actually owned by my friend Wolfgang who took it to Africa I think just once but before he went he sent it to the Custom Gunmakers Guild uh, American Custom Gunmakers Guild and I think he said it was John Bollinger that worked on the rifle and John did some interesting things I don't know John but um, oh, I'll leave that off uh, you can look at this glass bedding job I actually hadn't taken this rifle apart but I would have to say that that is probably the cleanest glass bedding job that I've seen. And what John did was quite smart. First of all, the Ruger from the factory comes with a great big quarter rib. I think it extends like from here all the way out to here and it's quite high. And I had one of these in 375, but I sold it or else I would have it on the table to compare the two before and after uh, John's work. Uh, in any event, he, so this this is here, pretty small, but there's a steel plate in the stock now. 
which is glass bedded and I'm assuming this is acro glass or a similar material and then this barrel band is an excellent idea and it's an airtight fit into this recess so recoil is not an issue anymore and I'm not saying that it was it could be that the factory arrangement was fine on the 375 I owned there was no evidence of splitting in the stock and if they split they usually split here now I'm not talking about this particular gun I'm saying any bolt action that isn't properly designed for recoil management um, allows this part of the action the tang area to move backward and they split here and uh, I think I've mentioned in other videos before if you buy a bolt action with a wood stock and you see that this is tight against the steel it never hurts to take a Dremel and remove just just a smidgen of material here to create an airspace so that if there was is movement by the action it doesn't split the wood here it'll it'll make contact up here um, anyway I wanted to draw to your attention this amazing glass bedding the steel block for recoil here and the front barrel band for recoil here uh, John also installed these beautiful African express sights and then even more than that um, he had this magna ported now some of you or most of you may know what this is um, they use a system of basically electron bombardment to cut two perfect like surgically cut openings on both sides so as the bullet travels down the barrel it's displacing gas forward and then of course the gas behind the bullet is it's like a room full of gas under high pressure so the gas is allowed to escape through these ports and the result of that is well twofold first of all it pushes the muzzle down and it also prevents so that prevents muzzle rise and then because the volume of gas is so dramatically reduced the movement backward that severe recoil um, is dramatically reduced reduced and people always talk about percentages of reduction like it's 50 percent less or whatever and um, you know it's hard to measure these things in scientific terms I guess it can be done I just go by what the gun feels like when you fire it and this 416 Rigby is tame now some people think uh, this reduces the value of guns I don't see it that way um, I the velocity loss is I would say minimal uh, there's an equation that some people use every inch is 100 feet per second less in bullet velocity I don't know if that's true or not I've just heard that over the years maybe it's some other equation anyway the stock is circassian walnut on the ruger magnum it's reinforced with here which is kind of funny um, given that there's no conventional recoil lug anyway we'll just pop these together and um, then we can look at the, the bolt itself so that falls together nicely and uh, these covers are also the work of the of the gunmakers guild fellow John Bollinger and uh, what he wanted to accomplish was to create what's called a double square bridge which is kind of a classic feature on an express rifle and these tally bases slide into those recesses now if you don't know tally they make sort of first class scope rings and you can see they have the the um, handle so they can be removed quickly but I think he wanted to make it so that you could take the scope off in one movement and as you all know on recoil scopes move forward a lot of people think they move backward but that's not how it works uh, with physics anyhow uh, so th this works nicely and it kind of looks very good these guys I thought maybe somehow could go into a grip cap compartment or something because they they're pretty small but anyway they went to Africa and they came back from Africa so I assume that that system worked and um, the the bolt action itself is quite conventional it has a typical um, claw extractor modified claw extractor I believe I'm correct in saying that you can put a round directly in the chamber and this claw will jump so that you could you could do that you would be 
ready to fire now. On a Mauser, as I've mentioned before, the rounds have to be in the, uh, in the magazine. So you have to pick up the round here on a Mauser and feed it in. Uh, so these are kind of like controlled round feed, but not quite the same as a Mauser. You've got a gas relief port here in case something goes wrong with your cartridge case. It bursts or what have you. <clears throat> and um, some people ask why the Rigby is so big and such a, such a big case, and so did I. And the answer is quite simple. Um, in the heat of Africa, the pressures can change, or that was the theory. And probably the Rigby was loaded with cordite, as a lot of them were. And so, I mean, the bigger the case, theoretically, the, the lower the pressure but the greater the volume of gas, and of course, the more powder you need to create that volume of gas. So anyway, that's a lot of talking about the 416 Rigby. It's a great cartridge. Um, you'll notice a little bit of, you may not notice, but you might also notice a little bit of discoloration. It's kind of a purplish cover color. I've seen this before on Ruger's, and um, typically, like what that means is, th this is obviously barrel steel, and by the way, this quarter rib on the Ruger is one piece with the barrel. The British Express Rifles I have, this is silver soldered, and, and in some cases they tell me they braze them on or what have you, but I think mostly they're silver soldered on. Um, but this is integral, and as I said at the beginning, it's a much bigger rib. Uh, anyway, it's been beautifully milled down by John at the Guild. And then this uh, sight is dovetailed in. Some express rifles have the rear sight on an island up here. And I guess if you're heading to Africa, you may as well take a decent rifle. And I, I think this, this is more than a decent rifle. Uh, the Ruger is excellent and uh, um, quite reasonably priced. Anyway, so um, the bolt is unremarkable. One feature I really like on this model of Ruger and the Hawkeye, which we'll look at, is that when you put the safety on, the striker is actually physically blocked. And I don't know if the camera can focus in on this, but when this is on safe, and the good people at Ruger even give you a little arrow, which way to push the safety, this can't move forward. It's, it's, it's blocked. And um, that's the way the safety should be. Bolt removal, so we'll take it off safe. Open the bolt. Um, we've got that double square bridge feature, which looks kind of sharp. Uh, the stock is a factory stock, except for that modification for the barrel band. Bolt removal, quite straightforward. Out and back, so that's simple. The typical decocking, hold the trigger, and it's quite safe. Uh, I took my usual magnet and tested all this, so this is steel. Actually, everything is steel. The magazine box is steel. The trigger guard is steel. And it's retained by the usual screws. And then the sling swivel actually goes into that barrel band, which I think is from John. So, I mean, it, this whole thing is quite well done. And this action is now not going to move anywhere. And as I mentioned, it's quite possible that the factory design system works well. Uh, I noticed that there's a different recoil pad on here. I guess somebody was still concerned about recoil. Um, there are all kinds of recoil pads you can put on here. I guess if I was putting a recoil pad on an express rifle, I'd probably put a silvers pad, the um, British uh, red pad or orange, depending on how you see things. So altogether, an excellent rifle. Um, it has the provision for the tally uh, rings, which is a good feature. On the other hand, I think Wolfgang was after Cape Buffalo and things like that, and I'm not sure whether a scope was even necessary. Of course, it, it all depends on, on range and things like that. But for those of you that were asking about the Magnum, um, sorry, I don't have an unmodified Magnum, but on the other hand, this rifle is so interesting, I thought I'd show it to you. And um, you know, it looks like this is just paint on the fore end. It could be plastic or some kind of polymer. Ideally, this would be an ebony fore end. And, and it's possible it is just for the bat, but I don't think so. 
and it's not hard to install an Ebony 4N and since this rifle is no longer factory it, it doesn't hurt to, to put something like that on there and it probably increases the value. Uh, so I think that is about it. Uh, the trigger is, uh, um, is excellent but I mean you don't need a target trigger to run to Africa with. <laughs> Uh, so this is more than sufficient. So I hope that covers the rifle in some detail. You saw how well made it is. Massive bolt action. Investment cast um, as the Rugers are. And then with this excellent work from the Gunmakers Guild fellow. So all together um, a, a, a serviceable, reliable rifle for Africa in an excellent classic caliber. A lot of people like to go to Africa with more modern cartridges and some like using the classics and probably if there is a classic it's the 375 Holland and Holland and second to that the 460 and that is it for the Ruger Magnum and some people call them the Ruger Safari model although I couldn't find that on the rifle anywhere anyhow thanks a lot for watching and we'll do another video